I made a bar cart. This is my take on the Builder's Challenge Mid-Century Modern Bar Cart. If you want to have a good time while watching this video, take a shot every time I say the word dowel. So before we get into it, huge thank you to this week's sponsor, Surfshark. You'll hear more about them later on in the video. Let's get into it. I started off this project with the trays. Woodworker Source, one of the sponsors of the Builder's Challenge, sent me this walnut for the project and it's S3S, so I only had to clean up one rough edge. I brought all the pieces to the miter saw and rough cut them to length. Then I ripped off that rough edge at the table saw, trimming all the pieces to the same width. The thicker eight quarter pieces are going to be the outer rim of the trays and the thinner four quarter pieces are going to be the tray bottoms. Before gluing any of these pieces up, I decided to make a template for the outer rim of the trays. To make the template, I used a circle cutting jig attached to my router and I wanted a 20 inch wide circle, so I marked 10 inches away from the router bit and drilled a hole through the jig. Then I put a small nail through that hole, brought the jig over to the piece of MDF, placed the router and jig roughly in the center of the board and hammered the nail through the MDF and my workbench. I plunged into the MDF and rotated the router around the nail to cut out the 20 inch circle. Now I want to turn this circle into a ring that's three quarter inches thick. So I made another hole in the jig that was three quarters of an inch plus the thickness of the router bit away from the first pivot hole and put a nail in place, making sure to place the nail back into the same center hole I used to make the first circle. I plunged the router into the MDF and cut out the second inner circle, creating a three quarter inch ring. Now, normally if I were to make a circle, like for a frame, I would glue up an octagon and then cut the circle out of that. But I really wanted this to look as if it was carved out from a thicker piece of wood, but without the waste of actually carving out the trays. So I used the MDF ring as a guide for how long to cut those pieces so that there will be no waste in the middle, which turned out to be about three inches. Luckily, one of those boards I milled up had a bunch of knots in it, and I was able to cut those three inch long pieces out of that board. I just made sure to cut out the knots as I went along. I used some chalk to outline the template before glue up to help me keep the pieces aligned and then got to gluing. This was a bit tricky to figure out, but I made it work by clamping each piece together from the top and bottom first, and then I could lightly tighten the clamps from side to side, then make any adjustments with the pieces before fully tightening those clamps down. When everything was all set, I double checked with my template to make sure everything was lining up and let it dry overnight. The next day, everything was dry and it was time to cut these into rings. I traced the MDF templates with a white pencil I stole from my daughter, so it would be easier for me to see the lines when I'm cutting. Then I clamped the blank down and began to cut away at both the inside lines and the outside lines with the jigsaw, creating a ring. I did run into a problem in a bit, so in retrospect, I do think the better idea would have been for me to use the router and a circle jig to start the cuts for the ring, cut it out with the jigsaw, and then use a flush trim bit to finish it off, but this way worked in the end. After the ring was free, I used some double-sided tape to temporarily attach the MDF template to the walnut and then brought it over to the router table with a super long flush trim bit to clean it all up. This bit worked pretty well on the outside of the ring, but remember I said I ran into a problem? Yeah, when flush trimming the inside, the bit got super grabby and it took a chunk out of the wood. I was really bummed, but I figured out a way to fix it in the end. In order to not risk any more tear out situations, I used a pattern bit in my trim router that has a bearing at the top of the bit. The bearing rides along the MDF cutting away at the walnut ring, but that bit just isn't long enough to flush up material this thick. So I flipped the ring over and swapped to a flush trim bit. This bearing is on the bottom of the bit, so it will ride along that first pass that I made with the template bit, leaving a perfectly clean edge. I felt safer doing this two-step process with the trim router, so I repeated the same thing for the second tray, and then I had two perfect rings. Well, almost perfect. <laughs> I had to fix that tear out from the router table. I considered just filling it in with epoxy, but I wanted to see if I could glue in a patch. Uh, to do this, I set up this crazy clamping situation, made a base for my trim router that had some feet that were lifted up above the ring, and just routed out a little square over the tear out, creating a flat bottom to glue in a patch. 
I couldn't believe that this was actually working. And all I needed to do after that was to clean up all the edges with a chisel so that they were nice and square as well. I really wanted to get the best grain match as possible, so I used some of the cutoffs from earlier to create these patches. After cutting them to size, I glued them into place and clamped them up. Once dry, I could easily flush them up using the same method as before. Pattern bit, flip over, swap to a flush trim bit, like those mistakes never even happen. <laughs> Crisis averted, so I can move on to the tray bottoms. I lined everything up with the template and made a carpenter's triangle so I know how to put it back together again and glued it all up. While that glue dried, I used a combination square to get the exact thickness of that material so I could bring that over to the router table and make a rabbit in the rings to hold that bottom piece. I was still a bit shaken up from the router table blowout that I had earlier, so I took a bunch of really shallow passes to create this rabbit. After a few shallow passes, I raised the bit to the height set on the combination square and made the final pass. Now the bottom panel is dry, so I used that outer ring as a guide and traced along the inside of the rabbit to get the size of the bottom tray. Then I lined up a center finding ruler on the middle of the seam of that glue up and I referenced the circle that I just drew out and marked the center of the board. I drilled a hole in the center of the board for the router jig, made sure not to go all the way through the board. This is gonna be the underside of the tray. Then I measured the distance between that center hole and the edge of the circle to get the radius. I put a small nail into the jig, then I lined up the nail with the hole that I drilled into the board, plunged and cut out the circle. Because the nail wasn't going all the way through the piece into my workbench, it wasn't secure to the table, so I had to just keep moving that clamp around until the circle was cut out. And yes, I plunged right into my bench. That's why I have an MDF bench. Anyway, this moment right here was probably the most satisfying of this build. Such a perfect fit. I could not be happier with that. I figured it would be really hard to sand the inside of the tray after it's all glued up. So I sanded the inside of the ring at the spindle sander and the top of the tray bottom as well. Now the pieces are ready to be glued up. I spread glue all along the inside of the rabbit and placed the bottom of the tray into place. Before clamping it up, I just wanted to make sure that all the glue seams are lined up because again, I want this to appear as if it's a carved tray. You be the judge and let me know if I achieved that look. After clamping it up, I wiped away any excess glue and this was especially important on the inside of the tray. It would be really hard to remove the dried glue from the inside. So I cleaned up most of the squeeze out with a straw, wiped away most of the excess with a wet rag, and then touched it all up with a wet toothbrush to really clean up every little last speck of glue. After that dried, I worked on the layout for the base. I'm going to use dowels as the legs for the base. And last week I showed how to make hardwood dowels, but Woodworker Source actually ended up sending me some to use, which is pretty awesome. I cut all the stretcher pieces to size using a stop lock at the crosscut sled. Then I made some marks so I can line up my self-centering dowel jig and drill some holes for the dowels I will use as the joinery. These stretchers will be joined to the round dowel legs. So I traced the dowel on the end of one of the stretchers and then sand it up to that line at the spindle sander. Now these stretchers are going to fit perfectly next to those dowels. Once I sanded both ends on one of the stretchers, I could use that as a template for the rest of them. And while I was still working on these pieces, I laid out some marks to drill oversized holes that will be used to attach the trays. First, I used a Forstner bit that was larger than the head of the screws that I'm going to use. Then using that little indent that the Forstner bit leaves over, I could align a smaller bit in the center of that hole and drill all the way through. This hole is wider than the body of the screw, so these holes allow for wood movement of the tray. Moving on to the dowel legs. I cut out a triangle in the center of this scrap 2x4 to help me hold the dowels um, flat at my machines. I was able to use it to mark a straight center line down the dowel to make sure all my joinery is on the same plane, which I thought was pretty cool. I lined all the dowels up and marked where the stretcher should be attached. Then I used dowel center points on the stretchers and pressed them into the dowel legs on those pencil lines that I just made. These dowel centers leave a little indentation for where to drill your matching dowel hole. So I did that at the drill press using that two x four that I cut the triangle into as a stable base. To mark out the holes on the other side of the leg, I temporarily put some dowels 
in all those holes that I just made, and I did my best at eyeballing the, the stretchers for square. This was really not a great idea, and I was doing this late at night, and I was just trying to rush to get this part finished, which is really frustrating because that night when trying to fall asleep, I came up with a better idea. I should have made this jig that's made of two pieces the same width as the stretchers. One piece is as long as the dowel is wide, the other is the same length plus the width of the plywood. After drilling two holes that would be in the center of the jig, I could have lined it up on that dowel and used a brad point bit in the holes to make my marks for drilling. This jig would have been an easier and more accurate way to make sure these joints were perfectly 90 degrees to each other. Oh well. <laughs> so I originally designed the handle of the spark art to have a flowing grain kind of look where all the joints meet at miters, but I just could not get the miters to line up and I spent way too much time than I'd like to admit trying to figure this out. Uh, it probably would have been easier if I cut all the miters on square stock and then made the pieces into dowels after the fact, but since I couldn't make the idea work, I had to figure out something else for the handles. So sadly, I cut off the miters and began to make my own 5 8 inch dowels that I could connect the handle to the legs. I go through this whole process on my making dowels video, but basically you mill square stock to the thickness you want your dowel to be, then you route all four corners of the piece using a roundover bit, and you leave the end square to keep it stable, so then you cut off those square ends miter saw, then you have a dowel. Awesome. To drill the holes that this dowel will sit in, I temporarily clamped the stretchers into the legs and used my self-centering drilling guide and a brad point bit to mark out for the holes. Then I drilled them out with a 5 8 inch Forstner bit, and it was a perfect fit. Then I just had to repeat the same dowel making process to make the handle. I cut square stock, I routed the corners off, and then cut off the square ends of the miter saw. Before I assembled everything, I did some final touch-ups on all the pieces. I added some roundovers on all sides of the trays using my trim router, and I also made the same roundover on all the ends of the dowels by clamping them into my vise and going around the dowel. Finally, time for assembly. I glued up one side at a time to make it easier. I put glue on all the dowels and put the stretchers in place. It was super helpful that I labeled all these parts. This definitely made this glue up go pretty smoothly. After I had two opposing sides that were in clamps, I was able to then connect those two sides with the rest of the stretchers. I put each stretcher into place with glue on the dowels and then put the other side into place on top and used a mallet to seat the dowels as much as I possibly could. And then I carefully took it off of my bench so that I could put some more clamps on. I know it looks like it's lopsided here. It's supposed to be that way. I'm only going to be putting casters on one side and I just haven't installed them yet. While that was setting up, I cut the 5 8 dowels to size and temporarily placed them in the holes I drilled earlier to mark out where to drill on the handle. Then I used the self-centering drilling guide and brad point bit again to mark out the center of the dowel and made some holes with a Forstner bit and I could then glue the handle on. First, the small dowels were glued into the legs and then the handle was glued onto those dowels. So that was easy enough, but while this wasn't my original design, I was pretty happy with how it was turning out. So after I got all those clamps off, there were just a few more final details to take care of like the final sanding and installing the casters. I clamped together two of my squares to make a dowel center finder, and I made two marks around the end of the dowel. The point where these two lines meet is the center of the dowel, so I made sure to use a center punch here so that I can guide a brad point bit directly onto that mark. Then I drilled a hole in the bottom of two of the legs for the casters and installed them. So these casters did not come with any instructions and I'm just assuming this is how they're installed, but they seem to work right, so I think I did it right. <laughs> so since I want this barker to stand up to some abuse, I used a couple of coats of satin spray lacquer and I also used lacquer because I wasn't in the mood to sand between coats. Once that was dry, I could attach the trays using screws through those oversized holes that I previously made in the aprons, and it's done. I told you guys I was going to say dowel a lot. So um, this project was actually a little bit more difficult than this video led on. And if you were watching on Instagram, you saw the entire process and all the mistakes that I made throughout the build. But before we get into all that and I show you all that, just a quick word from this week's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy easy and attainable. Surfshark encrypts all of your internet traffic so nobody can see what you're doing online 
and it blocks malware and phishing attempts and ads and trackers. So it's pretty cool. One of the coolest things is the clean web feature. When turned on, you'll never have that feeling like your phone is listening in on your conversations again because the privacy Surfshark provides stops those targeted ads. Besides for stopping Big Brother from watching you, Surfshark also prevents identity theft with something called HackLock. You can get alerts that somebody has potentially hacked into your email or tried to get your password. So you rest assured that your information will stay secure. There are other VPN services out there, but where Surfshark really shines is that you can use it on multiple devices simultaneously. So if you want to start protecting your digital life, click the link down below in the description or head on over to surfshark.deal slash Tamar and make sure to use the promo code Tamar, T-A-M-A-R, to get 83% off plus one extra month free. That's an amazing deal, so go check it out and stay safe out there, guys. So now let's talk about all these problems that I encountered on this build. You guys all saw that router table incident, so let's see what it looks like with finish on it. I don't think anyone is ever going to notice that, and I'm super happy with how that patch turned out. I also accidentally cut off the bottom of this leg and I glued it back together with a dowel and no one will ever know. And over here under this tray, you might notice something a little odd. I drilled some holes in the wrong location. I ended up plugging them up and we don't ever have to talk about that ever again. So problem solved there. Lastly, the handle. I really wish I was able to make those miters work out. I thought the design was really cool how I pictured it in my head just wasn't working out and I couldn't get them to line up. I think that maybe I want to try to attempt it again and I would start off with square stock, cut the miters into them and then turn those pieces into round dowels and I think that that would have solved the problem. I am really happy with how this turned out. I think it's very cool but I would like to try that idea that I had in my head on something else just to see if that was the problem and if that would help. So despite all those mishaps, mistakes and lessons learned, I'm super happy and thrilled with how it came out and I'm officially drunk from drinking all of this scotch. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Scotch, scotch, scotch. But what makes Surf Shark, Surf Shark, Surf, surf Shark, maybe I should have another drink. <laughs> thank goodness I don't have to drive carpool today. I'm done.